Before I discuss what inner alchemy or spiritual alchemy is, let's define alchemy. What is alchemy? Alchemy was the very early step into understanding chemistry. The main difference between the two is that chemistry is motivated by science whereas alchemy was motivated by the belief in the supernatural. In other words chemists believe that there is a reproducible and rational explanation for why things happen, whereas alchemists tended to believe that there were certain magical or charmed things that would get the job done for them. Alchemists did chemistry, they just had a different view of it. Since alchemy is the step to understanding chemistry, then inner alchemy is the step into understanding biochemistry. We are still learning about the human body. Spiritual alchemy or inner alchemy such as the practices of meditation and prayer and even yoga for example were once considered magical practices. Today it is known by science how meditation, prayer and yoga biologically affect us. It is based on biochemistry. The ancients knew in order to become spiritual, required proper diet, exercise and meditation. They may have not understood the science behind it, and thought there was a supernatural component to it. Our body chemistry has to do with how we feel, our personality and our whole well-being. Biochemistry directly affects our psychological well-being. Prayer and meditation affects our brain. There is also a type of prayer that is also detrimental to our well-being. First I will discuss how meditation and healthy prayer plays a part in the four parts of the brain, such as the frontal lobes, anterior cingulate, parietal lobes and limbic system. Number 1. The frontal lobe is activated when you focus your attention, plan, and reason, read or speak. This area can shrink with age. Shrinkage is associated with memory loss, mental decline, dementia and Alzheimer's. Prayer and meditation stimulates frontal lobe, helps keep it healthy, and prevents age-related shrinkage. Dr. Newberg discovered this. This prayer or meditation requires more than 5 minutes. 7 to 10 minutes is fine. Number 2. Anterior cingulate is the part that is activated when we feel empathy and compassion for others. Dr. Newberg calls it our neurological heart. Prayer and meditation activates that part of the brain which helps you feel compassion for others and the loving connection to all life, God. This has many helpful healthy benefits. Number 3. Parietal lobes is useful, but when unnecessarily activated can cause bodily and mental harm. The parietal lobes give you a sense of yourself separated from other people and things in the world. This is important for spatial reckoning, physical self-awareness, and the ego. Too much activity here can also give you a feeling of isolation and loneliness. Brain activity here is not associated with health benefits. Prayer and meditation, being around others in service, singing or chanting with others deactivates your parietal lobes. This helps you forget yourself and your problems, and instead to feel love and compassion for others, as well as closeness to God or all life. Meditation and prayer can significantly reduce how you experience pain. That is because meditation reduces activity in the parietal lobes, which causes you to take the focus off yourself and more awareness of others. Number 4. Limbic system can be a real troublemaker. The limbic system includes several parts just above the spinal cord. This is the primitive part of the brain, sometimes called the reptilian brain, because even reptiles have a limbic system. Attachment to emotions is created in this area leading to anger, fear, resentment, anxiety, depression and pessimism. These emotions was necessary for fight or flight response for our ancestors to survive. In modern society they have far less value in a more civilized mature world. Under circumstances when we are not in physical danger, the fight or flight response will unnecessarily cause physical and emotional harm. Meditation and prayer turns off the limbic system causing automatic thoughts to cease. Meditation increases your ability to feel love and compassion, improve your memory and mental function. Meditation and prayer is sort of a fountain of youth. 
Your brain is a muscle that requires exercise and nourishment. There's a prayer many do that can make you sick, that is the lazy thinking type of prayer. Examples are groveling and pity, bargaining and begging. When you pray saying, God have mercy on me, a miserable sinner, those prayers are detrimental as they activate the parietal lobes that causes feelings of isolation and division. This in return harms the well-being as it causes one to feel divided against others while God seems so far away outside existence. Prayer is actually the realization that the consciousness of you is one with universal consciousness, which is God. There is no separation between you, or anyone, or anything.